I'm Stu Harris of Story Strategist, and in this short video, we're looking at the Ansoft Matrix, a strategic tool to help businesses plan for growth and to attach levels of risk when assessing and comparing different strategies. The Ansoft's Matrix was first published by mathematician Igor Ansoff in the Harvard Business Review in 1957 in an article titled Strategies for Diversification. It's a simple model for looking at two main areas of activity, products and markets. Within each of these areas, we consider the existing activities of the business and also potential new products or services and markets that can be developed. It can also help to analyze risk while developing a strategy for growth. Risk increases as we move further away from the current successes towards new diversification. The Ansoft matrix has four zones. The Y axis, which is marked markets. The X axis is labeled products and services. And along both axes, we have existing and new, therefore new or existing markets and new or existing products and services. The bottom left quadrant labeled market penetration is therefore our comfort zone. It's where the existing focus is existing market penetration. There may still be opportunity for growth within the quadrant by increasing competition and increasing market share. The remaining three quadrants are the areas of opportunity that potentially come with risk and investment of resources, but could bring excellent growth opportunities. Let's take a look at an example as to how the Ansoft matrix can be applied to an historical business case. In October 2001, Apple diversified its business introducing the iPod into its product mix. Up until that time, Apple was known as a computer company. However, iPod wasn't Apple's first product to sell into the music category. Before Apple launched the iPod in January 2001, Apple laid the foundation for its diversification and growth strategy, introducing iTunes, free software to import music from CD and playback on Macintosh computers. 10 months later, Apple introduced the iPod, a new product into an existing market. iTunes provided the integration and ecosystem that would enable Mac users to take their music on the road, a thousand songs in your pocket. In 2003, the iTunes store was launched allowing online purchases of music files, enhancing the iPod's appeal. iTunes was required to manage files on the iPod, which meant at the time only Mac users could use the iPod and iTunes store. The products and services were positioned at Apple's existing customers. However, in October 2003, Apple released iTunes for Windows for free which expanded the market for iPod. This sales diversification strategy, many believe, was the catalyst for Apple's long-term success. For many customers, iPod was the first time customers had touched an Apple product. Now they could experience the benefits of its approach to developing ecosystems that create great ease of use between hardware and software. Mac customers had enjoyed this strategy for years and now the music business would carve away a new market for Apple that in time would help build its success in its existing products by helping bring new customers to existing products. The iPod paved the way for further diversification opportunities when Apple in 2007 developed the iPhone, which was a completely new market for them. Now the iTunes store later became the App Store and once again, an ecosystem was developed that cemented Apple's lead by innovating within a market that was completely new to Apple. This example helps us to see how the Ansoft matrix is a simple strategic tool to help plan for growth. We often use it together with other tools to help us develop strategies for companies looking to create greater engagement with existing and new audiences. I hope that you found this helpful and if you have, why don't you go ahead and give the video a like and subscribe so that you'll get notified as soon as we launch new videos just like this one. I'm Stu Harris. Thanks for watching.